everyone. We're continuing to read from Afro Pessimism. I'm telling you, I'm deep into the book. I'm almost in the. Is it the second chapter or the second part? Let's see how do you do it? Yeah, I'm almost into the second part. I'm in chapter three, going into chapter four, but I'm only reading the first chapter to you. Um, then you have to get it for yourself. So let's continue. Pain gripped my chest. Samir and I were antagonists, not because as friends we were mismatched, and not because our politics were incompatible, but because, but because the amigo of the black is responsible for all the conflicts that may arise. For the libidinal ec economy that positions the black amigo as a phobogenic object saturates the collective unconscious. It usurps me as an instrument for, though never a beneficiary of, every nation's woes, even two nations at war. I was no Afro-pessimism in 1988. In other words, I saw myself as a degraded human, saw my plight as analogous to the plight of the Palestinians, the Native American, and the working class. Now I understood that analogy was a ruse. I was to the foil of humanity. Humanity looked to me when it was unsure of itself. I let humanity say with a sigh of existential relief, at least we're not him. To quote Sadia Hartman, the slave is neither civic man nor free worker, but excluded from the narrative of we the people that affects the linkage of the modern individual and the state. The everyday practices of the enslaved occur in the difficult of the political in the absence of the rights of man or the assurance of the self-possessed individual. And perhaps even without a person in, usual, in the usual meaning of the term, black people embody which is different from saying are always willing or allowed to express a meta a priori for political thought and action. or medical aporia, sorry. For most critical theorists writing after 1968, the word aporia is used to designate a contradiction in a text of theoretical undertaking. For example, Jacques Derrida suggests an aporia indicates a point of undecidability which locates the site at which the text most obviously undermines its own rhetorical structure, dismantles or, or deconstructs itself. But when I say that black people embody a meta aporia um, for political thought and action, the addition of the prefix meta goes beyond what Derrida and the post-structuralists meant. It raises the level of abstraction and in so doing raises the stakes. In epistemology, a branch of philosophy concerned with the theory of knowledge, the prefix meta is used to mean about, its own category. Metadata, for example, are data about data. Who has produced them, when, what format the data are in, and so on. In linguistics, a grammar is considered to be as being expressed in a meta language language operating on a higher level of abstraction to describe properties of plain language and not itself. Meta discussion is a discussion about discussion, not any one particular topic of discussion, but discussion itself. In computer, computer science, a theoretical software engineer might be engaged in the pursuit of meta programming, i.e. writing programs that manipulate programs. Afro-pessimism, then, is less a theory of and more of a meta-theory, a critical project that by deploying blackness as a lens of interpretation interrogates the unspoken, assumptive logic of Marxism, post-colonialism, psychoanalysis, and feminism through rigorous theoretical consideration of their properties and assumptive logic, such as their foundations, methods, forms, and utility. And it does so again on a higher level of abstraction, of abstraction than the discourse 
and methods of the theories it interrogates. Again, Afro-pessimism is in the main more of a meta-theory than a theory. It is pessimistic about the claims theories of liberation make when these theories try to explain black suffering or when they apologize black suffering with the suffering of other oppressed beings. It does this by unearthing and exposing the meta aporias strewn like landmines in what these theories of so-called universal liberation hold to be true. Let's go here. And we'll stop right there. Afro-pessimism. It gives you the definition. And um, the thing is, the what does the black gaze mean to the world? I mean, or, or, or the gaze upon the black. What point of reference is the black? What does the black do for everyone else? When you're the bottom cast, you give everybody self-esteem just having you on the bottom. And no one can let you up. So you wonder, all these people around the world that were saying black lives matter, black lives matter. But, but in what way? Do we matter only enough for others to measure themselves against and to measure themselves as higher or do we actually matter as full human beings like everyone else and is the hierarchy flat because you can matter in both ways so we need to figure out when people say that we matter in which way so you see even a simple movement like black lives matter what you think of in your mind it can have at least two definitions, like everything else in this world. And we better know who we're walking beside and what, what, how we matter to them. Because you'll turn one day like he did in this story and think you have a pal and you realize, well, they don't really see you that way. They still see themselves as a few rungs above you. And if you were a black woman, one rung above you. Um, until next time, I say stay safe and stay sane.